So to uh, thank you very much, Inti, for inviting us here. It's been a very exciting discussion um, so far, and it's, it's exciting to have uh, Africa content, uh, which is not al always seen in some uh, conferences these days, but very important. So uh, please let me take a couple of minutes to describe our business, um, including some examples of our developments, um, uh, specifically the one in Nairobi, Tattoo City, and how we're trying to address the challenges of, and finding opportunities in the rapidly growing urban landscape in Africa. So just to start, uh, Rendever, our company, is investing heavily in Africa. Um, Africa, as many of you know, is the least uh, urbanized region in the world, but also the most rapidly changing. And population and economic growth are combining to drive this rapid urbanization as people move to Africa's cities in search of work or a different lifestyle. So our business, uh, Rendever, is, sorry, I seem to be one there. Our business, Rendever, is set to capture that growth in urbanization. Uh, as Christine mentioned, we're present in five African countries where we have seven projects at various stages of development. Kenya, Ghana, Nigeria, Zambia, DRC. So our business model uh, is to acquire large-scale land blocks or partner with uh, local owners uh, with clean land title, unencumbered, uh, in key urban growth corridors. Uh, the land is obviously probably the single most important initial aspect of these developments. Then we rezone the land for development. We obtain all the relevant permissions. And then we create a master plan uh, for a market and community-led uh, development. Uh, then uh, we go on to uh, procure and install all the bulk infrastructure for these projects. So that's bringing in the water, the power, the roads, sewerage, lighting. Uh, and recreational areas. Then at that point, we partner with developers or develop ourselves uh, to build these mixed income uh, residential, commercial, and industrial areas. So the result is an entirely new uh, city environment outside of the urban core of large, uh, large cities in Africa uh, in creating standalone live, work, and play environments over a period of 20 years of phased development. So our vision at Rendever goes beyond alleviating what is, what is a self-evident problem that I'm describing, and that's the stifling urban congestion and the real lack of quality uh, housing and commercial property in Africa. So rather, we aim to create the infrastructure that's needed and the living and working spaces and the communities and schools and hospitals that will help sustain and accelerate Africa's economic growth and also meet the aspirations af of Africa's burgeoning middle classes and serve as a catalyst for further urban development. So on to uh, Tattoo City, which is our development uh, 25 kilometers from the CBD of Nairobi. Uh, it's a 1,000 hectare satellite city project. It's in line with Kenyan planning, Kenya's plans for a decentralized development, uh, de separate decentralized development zones around Nairobi to alleviate congestion on the capital. So to be clear, Tattoo City is, is not one of the many gated communities uh, sprouting up around Nairobi. Uh, it's far too large to put a gate around 1,000 hectares. Rather, it's a holistically uh, planned residential, commercial, light industrial development for approximately 100,000 residents and 30,000 day, day visitors, again, over a period of 20 years of phased development. It's privately financed. Uh, we're a group of experienced emerging markets investors. Um, the project uh, has not been without challenges, but we generally enjoy uh, very broad support from the authorities. Uh, and Kenya and uh, Tattoo City, rather, was endorsed as uh, one of Kenya's flagship uh, Vision 2030 projects as a model uh, for private development and municipality management. So the current phases of uh, Tattoo City uh, include Kijani Ridge on the left there, lower left, which is uh, 60 hectares, has 302 residential plots, with a lot of open space. Uh, it's uh, about 65% sold out. And then the master plan, you can also see uh, the high density uh, area, which is uh, brown below. Sorry, I'm not getting it. All right, we'll do that. Well, anyway, the brown, brown part below is a high density area. Uh, where we plan to launch um, high-rise buildings, six to eight stories, and that will be a development by ourselves that we'll announce toward the end of the year. And then on the upper right-hand side, you can see the purple area, which is the industrial park. 
and that's 170 hectares of service land suitable for non-polluting light industry, assembly, warehouse, and logistics. So Tattoo Industrial Park has been really the runaway success so far. There's a, a huge amount of pent-up demand for quality uh, uh, industrial land uh, with good infrastructure in uh, Kenya, specifically in Africa as a whole at our other projects. So our, uh, one of our biggest successes so far has been uh, Unilever, which has decided to uh, build its largest ever investment in the company's history in Africa at Tattoo Industrial Park. Uh, this photo shows the groundbreaking of the industrial park with some of our executives and our founder and the Minister of Industrialization. There are also, in addition to Unilever as a multinational, there are major Kenyan and East African companies moving to Tattoo Industrial Park. Dormans, which is the largest coffee grower and producer in East Africa, is moving its headquarters and processing facilities to Kenya and to the industrial park, in Kenya to the industrial park. Uh, just a quick aside on, on Dormans, um, a very interesting company, over uh, 70 years old in Kenya. Uh, if you drink coffee at Starbucks, it says it's from Kenya. Generally, it's, it's produced by Dormans, so you're probably familiar with it by taste. Um, Dormans in Kenya, in Nairobi rather, has a production facility in the old industrial area, or the current industrial area, area of, uh, of Nairobi. Uh, they also have a production facility in Thika, and then they have a traditional corporate headquarters in the CBD of Nairobi. Uh, they are selling all of that property and building their greenfield facility at Tattoo Industrial Park. So really shifting outside the city center and outside uh, the, um, the, the burdens of urbanization on, on uh, Nairobi. So our investment in uh, Tattoo City is uh, long term. As I mentioned, it'll take uh, at least 20 years to reach maturity. Um, a couple of the opportunities and challenges before I conclude. So the opportunities, I think, are, are pretty clear. Um, we are a commercial company, a private company, uh, and we have a commercial interest in the investment. But at the same time, our commercial interests uh, dovetail and address, uh, dovetail with and address the, the burdens of urbanization and population growth around Nairobi. Uh, Tattoo City, we actually plan to double in size. Um, just a bit of information for this room. Uh, because of the huge demand on the land and the potential for development. So Tattoo City, when it does double in size, could address up to 4 or 5% of the country's housing shortage, uh, which, as Christine mentioned, stands at 2 million units and grows by 200,000 a year. Uh, we have the opportunity to, hire, to offer a higher quality of life for Africans, uh, who we believe should have the same access to goods and services as anywhere else in the world or anyone else in the world. And finally, we are creating jobs uh, through a period of 20, 20 years. Uh, it's potential, there's potential to create tens of thousands of jobs over the investment period. In terms of the challenges, and in conclusion, the large-scale large proj projects always face challenges. Uh, and for us and for our discussion today, we'd like to highlight uh, quality of execution is a big one for us, how to make reasonable compromises without uh, sacrificing quality in the projects. Uh, another one is imposing building standards that can be met uh, by local resources at the current time. Uh, and that in involves sourcing materials that have international standards, but sourcing them locally so they can be affordable. Uh, gaining access to utilities, uh, because our developments generally move faster uh, than uh, the grid or government are able to provide uh, utility connections. So in a lot of cases, we make that final mile. Uh, the last mile connection, or in some cases, the last 10 mile connection to where we are. Um, and uh, that is the presentation for today. Thank you.